Yeah, I think it's fitting to follow the Transport Minister, Stephen Joyce, because I'm talking about his handiwork in the Kapiti Coast, where he's bulldozing a motorway through the community, and just like that last speech, he made up for a lack of substance with volume. Mr Speaker, today at Parliament, hundreds of Kapiti Coasters gathered to discuss his handiwork in the House, Mr Speaker. We heard speeches from councillors, tangata whenua, locals, all opposed to this expensive, uneconomic motorway the Transport Minister is ramming through. The Minister is making a monument to the 1950s in concrete and asphalt, a monument of old-fashioned thinking, a colossus of roads, a scar on the Kapiti Coast is what the Minister is doing. For every dollar, Mr Speaker, we spend on all the walking, all the cycling, all the buses, all the trains, all the coastal shipping, this Transport Minister is pouring, or borrowing to pour, seven dollars on his roads of national significance. Now what we're not talking about is corridors of significance, joined up thinking like that. No, we're looking at roads of national significance. Now what I believe in is smart transport investments that balance roads with sustainable transport modes like walking, cycling, buses, trains, which are going to future-proof our transport system so it's more affordable, efficient, versatile and better for our economy. The Kapiti Expressway is one of seven roads of national significance. Now what I think we're actually talking about is motorways of significance to the National Party. In a nutshell, the Kapiti Expressway is expensive, uneconomic, not needed at all, damages local communities and looking towards the future is quite simply the wrong way to go. It's expensive. We're talking $500 million at a time when our country is borrowing hundreds of millions of dollars a week. It's uneconomic. It's Benefit cost ratio is just barely above one. We've also seen the Minister uh, play with the numbers. We've seen an independent estimate, the Saha report, come in with a much lower benefit cost ratio. An OECD report I tabled recently in this Parliament shows that there's no correlation in New Zealand between motorways and economic growth. And what we've seen in America is that there's much greater numbers of jobs created in public transport or local roads production, not on expensive white elephant motorways like this. Even Don Brash in his 2025 task force had to say of the Wellington motorways the projects would not provide a net benefit to the economy. It's not a smart way to build prosperity. This motorway is not needed. Now, the locals, including local member Nathan Guy in his election campaign, was campaigning and supporting for the Western Link Road, which was a series of road upgrades, uh, bridges, which would have been cheaper, which would have achieved those safety objectives in a matter of years, not more than a decade, as this road does. What this road is going to see is more people stuck on more congested roads. All around the world, when you build a road, more people use it. It's called induced traffic. It's kind of like dieting by extending the belt buckle. What we're going to see is negative impacts on public transport, which is growing at a pretty uh, small pace in Wellington, yet rocketing ahead in Auckland. In our transport sector, our greenhouse gas emissions have increased 70% since 1990. We're dismally failing our Kyoto obligation targets, yet this expressway treats the climate as if it wasn't of significance. On the back of high, well, in fact, the highest petrol prices ever in our country's history, this motorway is dependent on a fuel of declining significance. Most importantly for the locals, which I heard today, this motorway is going to split their community in two with a 100-kilometre four-lane motorway. It treats the community as if it wasn't a community of national significance. We've seen an absolutely shocking process by the Minister where the road was announced nine months before any business case or economic analysis was released. We've seen a circumvention of the normal independent transport planning process. The locals wanted the Western Link Road, yet the government has come on top of them and dictated this road. We've also seen blatant politicking with the facts. $16,000 wasted when the government decided to play politics with the date of the announcement of the route, because they were worried, of course, it was going to affect their by-election chances in the Mana by-election. Now, the real impacts are on those 43 homes which are going to be demolished, those 33 households which are going to be affected, who weren't expecting it, because over the decades people had planned for the, an upgrading of State Highway 1, those needed improvements, yet instead the government's come on with a grandiose white elephant, expensive, uneconomic motorway. Why are we doing it? It's simply to benefit the trucking industry. This government has a goal of increasing the trucking freight 75% by 2050. So this road of significance is a road of trucking significance based on a fuel of declining significance as if the community wasn't of significance. It's got to be stopped. The Honourable Craig.